sand. It's quick. It's sand. It's the classic killer of movie villains since time immemorial. But is quicksand really the ruthless killer that Hollywood makes it out to be? Or is it just another anticlimactic curiosity blown up by big budget blockbusters? A young man found out the truth the hard way when he found himself mired in a mountain of muck on a hike with his friends in 2011. Only after calling a helicopter rescue did he find out just how dangerous this phenomenon really is. Today's episode concerns outdoor safety. Always tell someone when and where you're going if you ever venture out into the wilderness. We're not experts on the matter, and frankly, I never go outside. So if you have more questions regarding quicksand or other potentially dangerous natural phenomenon, please consult an expert. And with that out of the way, let's get into it. Rob Tesser, 25, was out on a hike at noon with his friends from the National Outdoor Leadership School at the end of November, when his path was obstructed by a cliff running flush with the river they had been following. The spot they had planned to meet their instructors was just beyond this section. They spotted a raised bank that looked to be mostly mud and sand, so Tesser volunteered to go first. At first glance, the bank appeared to be solid, but as Tesser and another student began to cross, their mistake became more and more obvious. Once the duo realized that they were sinking, they tried to turn around, but as Tesser turned back, he sank even deeper. The other students on shore got to work immediately setting up a line across the mud bank that the two boys could grab to pull themselves out. Luckily for the other boy, he managed to slip out of his shoes and pull himself to safety, but unfortunately, Tesser was stuck firm up to his waist. It was a brisk 15 degrees Celsius, so Tesser's submerged extremities were quickly going numb. He was careful up until this moment to not get wet, but as he struggled, he sank further, and the agitated mud left an inch or two of water around him. He and his companions considered calling for help, but, quote, it was a weird conversation because the situation didn't seem super serious. The sun was setting, and the temperature continued to drop, so it seemed like he was going to be stuck there past nightfall. His companions, fearing hypothermia, passed him his heavy clothes in a garbage bag to make sure none of it got wet. They then built him a raft out of thermal mattresses so he could lie down to sleep without drowning, and activated his personal locator beacon to call for professional help. About four hours later, at 8 p.m., emergency services arrived. Tesser says of the moment he heard the helicopter that, when I led canoe trips in Canada, a helicopter was something I never wanted to hear. It made me worry. But now, it was the best sound he'd ever heard. Unfortunately, the helicopter couldn't land close enough to Tesser for him to attach himself to the skid, so the pilot descended as low as possible above Tesser. Tesser then gripped it as hard as he was able to. He said later that, he wanted so badly to be pulled out that he held on tight. His body had never been pulled out in such a way, but he didn't let go. After three attempts to pull him free, Tesser says that they yanked him in a strange way, and he felt his spine go, and I quote, pop, 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 pop. Which is the same noise you'll make when I'm done with you. You face more down, you fool. You made a mistake coming here. Hi, elves, to me. What? No. My friends, the High Elves are a shining bastion of heroism in this dark time, and Raid Shadow Legends is an oasis of entertainment in a desert of isolation. Just the thing to defeat Bordom when time has become an amorphous blob to the point where I don't even know what month it is. February! Apparently it's February. I particularly like the dungeons, where I can test my team's might, but I needed a greater test of skill. That's where the new Doom Tower comes in. With 120 floors of challenges, secret rooms, and 12 bosses that challenge even the mighty Lizard King, it's been a blast. All hail the Lizard King! All hail the Lizard King! Join me and the High Elves today. Click the link in the description to get your free Spirit Champion, 50,000 silver, 50 gems, 5 mystery shards, 1 day XP boost, 1 energy refill, and 1 clan boss key as soon as you get in game. Plus, you'll even get this shiny Hexweaver Champion to get you started off. You'll find your extra rewards here in your inbox for the next 30 days only. Thanks so much, Raid, for sponsoring this video. Now, back to the episode. Unfortunately, not everyone who gets caught in quicksand is able to call a helicopter rescue. In 1997, two Chicago teenagers set out after school to do a little fishing as they often would. But, according to their parents, they didn't come back home. Around 8pm on April 30th, their mothers reported their disappearance to the police. 
but officials didn't think anything of it. They just assumed the two boys had run away. Three days later, a family friend found the two boys' lifeless bodies submerged in mud and sand at the edge of an excavation site nearby close to where they fished. The spot seemed innocuous enough, just a four to six foot patch of mud with a couple feet of water. Emergency services, however, soon discovered that even people from the rescue team began sinking in the mud and required help to extract themselves. They needed the pool of water to be drained, and a backhoe brought in to dig up the bodies. The stepfather of one of the boys said that, the police told us there were claw and scratch marks in the sand. In the end, the police coroner determined that the two boys died of exposure and drowning. These boys suffered a terrible fate. How can we make sure that we know how to escape in these situations? If movies are to be trusted, then quicksand is nothing but a death trap. How many scenes can you conjure up where some villain descends slowly under the ground, never to be seen again? Well, there's that scene from the bad Indiana Jones movie. Or The Princess Bride! Exactly. The point is that quicksand has been a go-to booby trap in Hollywood for years. But quicksand, first off, isn't always sand. It can be composed of any sort of grainy material, like clay or silt with water. Usually, the friction between grains allows sand to hold up to an immense amount of pressure, something called a force chain. Basically, each individual grain of sand presses up against each other grain, spreading out the force across the entire surface, locking them all together. It works similarly to the board game Don't Break the Ice, where a bunch of white cubes are wedged tightly into a board, holding up an ice skater. The pieces are wedged such that the pressure they exert against each other and the edge of the tray counteracts any pressure that gravity exerts on them. Each grain of sand, as it's compressed, wedges itself against the other grains. However, when there is sufficient moisture, the grains of sand no longer sit next to each other, but float in water, creating a liquid instead of a solid base. It's like cornstarch in water. It can look solid at first step, but it'll quickly turn to liquid and suck you in. Unlike in films, real quicksand isn't usually deeper than a few feet, so being completely submerged and drowning isn't the most scary thing about this phenomenon. The real fear is exhaustion and being trapped in the elements for long periods of time. If you exhaust yourself trying to escape, you might pass out and drown. If it's cold, you're in danger of developing hypothermia. If it's hot, you're in danger of dehydration and heat stroke. But if you did find yourself stuck in quicksand, how could you escape? The worst thing you can do is struggle and thrash around. Moving violently will not only settle the mud around you, turning it into a concrete slurry, but it will also create pockets of suction where your body moves. The best thing you can do is use slow, deliberate movements to bring yourself to the surface, then try to lay back as much as you can. I do have some good news for everyone at home though. Even if a pool of quicksand was deep enough for one to descend below their head, they'd still only be in as much danger as if they were stuck up to their knees. Oh yeah, that's helpful advice, bro. The reason for that is because the human body is less dense than quicksand. The human body is mostly water, and it's about 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. But quicksand is about 125 pounds per cubic foot. We float on water if we want to, so we'd float even better on a denser substance. It will also help you if you spread out your body's surface area as much as possible. It's kind of like lying back on a bed of snow. If you stand, all your weight is on two points, the bottoms of your feet, and they act like nails driving you down. If you lie back though, all your weight is distributed across your entire body, and the snow is better able to hold you up. To make sure you never get yourself into one of these sticky situations, keep an eye out for low-lying muddy areas with grainy soil, like riverbanks, beaches, marshland, and places with underground springs, as these are the ones prone to developing quicksand. It's also a good idea to consider bringing a walking stick, not only to check if a patch of land is safe to stand on, but you can also slide your walking stick along the length of your leg to create an air pocket, counteracting that vacuum we talked about earlier. Wait, bro! You, you forgot to finish that story from before! Ah, yes. Tessar had just been yanked by a helicopter, his spine cracking like a bag of popcorn. He shot them the no-go sign and heard the pilot say, If I try this anymore, I'm going to rip this kid in half. The helicopter left soon after, and returned at around 9.30 with another batch of medics who approached Tassar in rafts. A total of 10 first responders, one in each boat dug with shovels, while the others held back more mud and sand from falling back into the hole. Three agonizing hours later, Tassar's leg finally came loose. Rescuers tugged Tassar out of the mud and into the raft. After 12 hours of being trapped in a muddy prison, he was flown to the hospital, where he was treated for hypothermia. 
Quicksand is dangerous, but only as dangerous as your knowledge of how to get out of it. If you're going out into the wild, it's paramount that you have plenty of fresh water and tell people where you're going and when you're planning to come back, so that if anything happens when you're out on the trail, people will know that something has happened to you and where to look for you. This isn't just advice for when you get stuck in quicksand, but for staying safe outdoors generally. Safety measures may change though, depending on where you live. If you want to know more, checking in with local authorities will give you the knowledge you need to stay safe. Stay safe, watch your step, or else you won't have a leg to quick stand on.